to call the 25th meeting of the 2015-2016 Common Council to order. Would the clerk please read the quote for the day. Thank you, Mayor. Every time you are able to find some humor in a difficult situation, you win. Thank you for sharing that. <laughs> please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Would the clerk please call the roll? Um, there are 14 present. And Alderman Herman is excused. Next, we'll move on to the pr approval of the minutes from our last meeting. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to approve. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the minutes? Seeing none, all those will a favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Uh, are there any resignations this no, evening? No, there aren't. And appointments? <coughs> nope. Okay. Next, we'll move on to the public forum. City Clerk. Uh, we have one person this evening, David Day. If you would mind coming up to the podium, please. <clears throat> and David, can you give us your full name and home address, please? My full name is David Joseph Day. My home address is 4030 Matthew Drive, Racine, Wisconsin, <coughs> 53402. Thank you. And you will have five minutes, sir. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, the reason I'm here tonight, I represent the uh, property owner at 632 Michigan Avenue. Uh, that building had a fire on May 26, 2014. Uh, we've been going back and forth with the insurance company on the damages and the disposition of the building. I've come to the city to ask for a raise order. The building inspector has been through the building. He seems to concur with my findings. Uh, he won't issue the raise order without city attorney approval which has not been granted. So I'd like to present this before the city council and ask for help in getting a raise order for this building. There's approximately $1 million worth of damages to that building. The building is assessed for $225,000 at the time of the fire. It's unreasonable to repair it. And one of the reasons behind not issuing the raise is the city attorney would like to see the property repaired, but it's just not financially feasible based upon the damages. I've given each of you photographs of the damages to the building. I've also given the uh, council members who are in charge of that ward a full packet of the pictures and the estimate, the preliminary estimate, and the asbestos and lead testing that has been done since the time of the fire. There is lead and there is asbestos in the building which will have to be remediated in order to facilitate repairs. Um, if the building's knocked down, those problems, the asbestos and lead, will also be abated during that process. So what I'm asking the City Council to do is more or less help me get the raise order and approve this through other means if we can. Uh, the, the owner of the building does not want to repair it. Uh, they do want to knock it down. and. Uh, potentially sell the land or do some type of development back in 2014, but I don't know if that is possible anymore based on the time that's elapsed since, since the fire. So the building's been sitting there. The reason, uh, I guess the, the best reasons for approval of this is the benefits to the city are one, the building is in the process of being foreclosed on by the bank. If the bank gets it, they're not going to do anything to it except abandon it. If they abandon it, then I don't know if it becomes city property or how that gets relayed to the city, but at some point that building's going to be, have to be knocked down. I stand here today, is the city issues the raise order, I will guarantee that that building will be gone. If the bank forecloses on it, I can't make that same guarantee. The other thing I'd like to say is, one of the issues behind not issuing the raise order is that the potential for suit against the city by the insurance company. I'm also here to tell the city council, the city attorney and the mayor that if the city gets sued by the insurance company, then my client will also be sued 
we will have to get defense counsel to handle the claim or handle the case. I'm offering that if the city uses our attorney, there won't be any charge to the city for the defense of the case against the insurance company or the insurance company against us. So the benefit to the city is we will get rid of the building, we will protect you should the insurance company sue, and there won't be any cost to the city. Again, I can't guarantee that if the bank forecloses on the property and the bank becomes the, the owner of that building. That's all I gotta say. Thank you, David. That's all I have for public comment. Thank you. Next, we'll go on to mayor's announcements. Jim Amodio was hired as the finance director for the city of Sheboygan in August of 2010. He brought a strong education and decades of, uh, of ex experience in the private sector to that finance director position. He accepted the challenge to adapt to Gatsby Municipal Accounting Principles, and Jim made this transition, and along the way, he also found a way to make city government act more like a business. Soon after the city was faced with administrative issues and the city council decided to create the position of chief financial officer and administrator to oversee the daily operations of city government. Jim applied for and was selected to serve in this new position until his retirement at the end of this month. During that time, Jim provided the needed leadership to the team of department heads at City Hall. Jim and this team evaluated city operations, looking for opportunities to streamline and consolidate city government. He worked with the Finance Committee and set a goal to bring city debt, which was at that time over $60 million, down to a level that could be supported by our levy. And with good, an and with good annual budget since, we kept the tax rate flat, and the debt load is now down to $34 million. Jim would remind us that even though he's leaving, we still have to finish the job of getting the get down, down to about $25 million. Jim's worked closely with the Planning and Development Department as the lead negotiator on many industrial, commercial, and residential projects. And I counted up today, and there's over $160 million in new construction. They either began in 2015 or began in 2016, and is expected to be completed in 2016 and 2017. The assessments for this new construction should increase our tax collections by 1.9 million in 17 and expected to increase by an additional 7.6 million in 2018. Jim has worked hard to see the city of Sheboygan build strong partnerships with the Sheboygan Economic Development Corporation, Sheboygan County, the Sheboygan Squared Business District, and the Sheboygan County Chamber of Commerce and others to achieve positive results. Um, at this time, I'd like to ask uh, President, uh, Council President Don Hammond to come up and say a few words. First off, does anybody know me to say a few words? So let's all get settled in. It's going to be a while. <laughs> You're over there. Good. Um, you're going to need to uh, you know, crack those old bones and walk up here. So today I stand before you not to, uh, to uh, let me start all over again. Today I stand before you to honor not just my colleague but my friend with this proclamation this proclamation from the newly created office of the president. In case you're wondering, my office is out the door to the right with the words men's on it. Whereas Mr. Amo oh, sorry, my proclamation. <laughs> Whereas Mr. Amodio, known by some as Long John, uh, has been a dedicated, outstanding finance director and city administrator. Whereas Long John came into his position during a very difficult time for our community, and perform this new position with professionalism, um, dedication, and without looking for glory or credit. Whereas over the last six years, his list of accomplishments, the mayor pointed out some, include Blue Harbor, um, reducing our debt, balancing our budget, countless economic development deals like the Boston Store, the LCM Convent Project, South Pier, Old Wisconsin, Festival Foods, the Meyer and the Mall provided stability to our staff inside City Hall during some pretty tumultuous times, the Sheboygan River dredging project, and many others that will forever change the landscape of Sheboygan for the better. Whereas, although we did not accomplish these without the help of a great supporting cast, many of you are in the room, your leadership and experience was instrumental in their success. Whereas, although you were blessed 
to have served with an outstanding council president. Your friendship will forever, will forever be cherished and is one of the highlights of my time on the council. Whereas, by virtue of you moving, the local Dunkin' Donuts will see at least a 50% reduction in current revenue. <laughs> Whereas, on behalf of the Common Council, I congratulate you and thank you for your dedication, perseverance, and again, most of all, your friendship. Please come up. Therefore, by the power vested in me as president, by me, I do by here, I hereby proclaim today, April 6th, the day of the Long John. <laughs> there, are, there are 36 Long Johns in there, approximately one for every month we work together as president and uh, city administrator. Thank you. Jim, the presents aren't finished. <laughs> I've got a, a, something here to present you. Small token of, uh, 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 for all the work that you've done to, to help uh, the city out. Uh, it's a bottle of fine Italian wine from a very good uh, local business. I know the Italian part will, will keep you happy. Yeah. And it's a wine that'll age for a while, but if you decide, to, whenever you decide to drink it, I hope you'll remember the great people that you work with here at City Hall and all the good that we accomplished. Is that on the way home okay? Uh, I don't think that would be, <laughs> be the best idea. And, uh, wine and donuts, what can go wrong? And then to follow with our, uh, our, our, our practice here, I want to give you a certificate of appreciation from the City of Sheboygan uh, for your five years of dedicated service to the City of Sheboygan. Jim, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. you. Want to say a few words? Why did Nancy Bus sign that? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. Um, I didn't have a speech. Uh, I probably could have gone on for at least an hour and gone around the room and thank everybody for what they've done. You've been very supportive to me. Uh, Don, great friend. We've got a lot done. Uh, Nancy Bus, thanks to her for keeping me out of jail. <laughs> Every time I came up with a great idea, she goes, you don't look good in stripes, especially the ones that go this way. So we didn't do it. Uh, the department heads have been um, extremely great to me. Uh, very little management uh, from my standpoint. They all know what to do. Sometimes we get a little misguided. I think Joey Meatball still owes me a, uh, a tree management plan, but uh, is, is, Dave, is Dave there? Oh, Dave. You've got that on your desk, right? Okay, that's good. It's been there for what, a week now? That's been <laughs> it's age, oh, two weeks, okay. Um, but everybody from, from a department level has really helped come together and supported the initiatives of the city. Um, I'm extremely proud and glad to be part of that. Uh, I think the city's come a long way. It's got a long way to go. Um, and hopefully <clears throat> when Daryl comes in, he'll continue to carry the torch. So again, I wanna thank all of you from the bottom of my heart. Next, we'd uh, like to follow up with a few announcements. Uh, first of all, they're gonna have another meeting of the Skate Par Board Park Planning Committee. That's gonna be on April 14th at 6.30 at the Qantas Park Fieldhouse. You'll see on your desks an Emerald Ash Borer announcement and uh, press release. The City of Sheboygan has confirmed the presence of Emerald Ash Borer in the city. On March 23rd, the DNR officials confirmed that an ash tree that was removed by the Department of Public Works tree crew in the 2400 block of Ontario Avenue was infested with the Emerald Ash Borer. This is the first confirmed uh, detection in the City of Sheboygan and the farthest north detection in Sheboygan County. Since the first find, the crews have also found uh, EAB in two additional areas, Lakeview Park on the far south side and North 17th Street, New Jersey Avenue along the Sheboygan River. In 2015, the city received a $21,000, $900 uh, grant from the uh, DNR Urban Forestry Program to prepare an urban forestry management plan, which Jim just referenced. Yeah. 
And uh, this will conduct um, a tree planting site inventory, uh, a purchased uh, tree inventory software, and it'll also uh, include an EAB component. The management plan is near completion and will soon be presented to the City Council for their review and approval. The plan will determine the next steps for the city uh, as we handle this infestation. Uh, insecticide treatments, tree removals, replanting and other, with other tree species will all be part of this plan. Uh, we've also worked uh, to schedule a public meeting because this will affect the trees on many private uh, residence lots and the EAB public information meeting will be held at the Qantas Park Fieldhouse on Wednesday, April 20th from 7 o'clock to 8 o'clock. Bill McNee of the DNR Forest Health uh, Specialist in Plymouth will provide information on the EAB and how the pest will affect local ash trees and the options for homeowners have to treat and remove the trees on their property. The city has also uh, worked to set up a, a web page on the city website and that will contain a map with the location of all the ash trees along city streets and our uh, right away uh, and uh, some of the parks trees are also noted. There's also some information from the state DNR on uh, either EAB website, uh, some articles about is my ash tree worth saving and uh, options for treating it, a homeowner guide to the emerald ash borer insecticide treatments, and uh, UW Extension also has a site and we have a link to that uh, to deal with the emerald ash borer. Another challenge for our community. Uh, we also have landlord training scheduled for April 12th at 5.30 at the Deland Community Center. Um, and we've had some information distributed by the police department today about a Discover Sheboygan free neighborhood bus tour on April 26th. Uh, it'll be a chance to meet the neighborhood officers and learn more about the history of the Flats neighborhood, King Park, Franklin neighborhood, River Watch, South Pier, Sheridan, and Riverbend. It's a free tour and it starts at five o'clock sharp on uh, April 26th. It'll depart from the uh, historical um, museum and if anyone's interested, they should call 459-0251 to make a reservation. Uh, they can only accommodate the uh, first 30 people. Um, you all have an uh, envelope on your desk tonight. That's your alderman uh, preference uh, survey. So if you could please fill those out and get those to me uh, at the latest by Wednesday of next week. That'll help in putting the uh, committee appointments together for the next council term. And I've got one last announcement. Don Hammond, we'll call on you for that. All right. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, please, you, I'll just do that from here. Yep. Thank you. Um, as many of you know, my work schedule, my work schedule has, has changed significantly. I travel a lot more um, than I have, which makes um, Monday meetings very, very difficult. So given the accomplishments we've made, the change in the city administrator, um, I have it decided. That effect of April 18th, I will be resigning from the council. cannot underscore, it's been truly a pleasure working with each and every one of you, um, those that came before, those that are currently here. Um, I've really, truly enjoyed it, but I think it's time to move on. Um, I, if I can't do something at 110%, as many of you know, um, it's not worth doing. So again, I've decided that effective April 18th, I will be resigning. Don, uh, we really hate to hear that, but thank you so much for all the work that you've done for the city of Sheboygan. Mm -hmm. You've done a great job. Thanks. Thank you. Alderman Boren, you had a comment? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I just wanted to take a minute and uh, 
thank Madam Sue Richards for running an uh, extremely smooth election. I want to thank her and her staff. A lot goes into that uh, from <coughs> recruiting poll workers, training poll workers. I believe Sheboygan had a turnout of almost 70%, about 20% higher than the state of Wisconsin. And also want to thank uh, Dave Beeble's guys for helping set up at the various polls. So thank you very much, Sue. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Now, going back to Don's announcement, um, the vacancy uh, has the op people in the uh, area that, that Don represents have the option to um, file a candidacy with the city. They will just need a simple letter that they're seeking the position and a brief resume. And we ask that those be turned in by April 15th. And uh, we're tentatively scheduling the council election for that position on April 19th. That'll be the first uh, meeting of the new council. Okay, then we'll move on to uh, public hearings. Uh, that'll encompass items 2.1 through 2.4, which is a hearing for confirming the exercise of police power and making assessments for those benefited properties against which assessments are proposed for parking assessment districts one, two, four, and five. And item 2.5, which is a hearing for the proposed water main replacements in South Business Drive from County Trunk OK slash Riverdale Avenue to approximately 1,230 feet north of the center line of Stall Road. Is there anyone wishing to be heard? Uh, is there anyone wishing to be heard? <coughs> is there anyone wishing to be heard? Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to close the hearings. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Next, move on to the consent agenda. That'll include items 3.2 through 3.19. Alderman Hammond. Thank you again, Mr. Mayor. I move to accept and file all reports of officers, accept and adopt all reports of committees, and put all resolutions and ordinances upon their passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on any items in the consent agenda? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage. Fourteen eyes. Motion passes. Under reports of officers, item 4.1 will lie over till April 18th. Items 4.2 through 4.9 will be referred to various committees. Under resolutions, item uh, 5.1 is a resolution by Alderman Donahue, Heidemann, Boren, and Koth making changes to the 2016 compensation program for non-represented employees. Alderman Donahue. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, as an initial matter, I would move to suspend the rules. Second. We have a motion to suspend. Is there any objection to suspension? Seeing none, please proceed. Thank you. Uh, in that respect, I move uh, that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Fourteen eyes. Motion passes. Items 5.2 through 5.5 will be referred to various committees. Under reports of committees, item 6.1 is an RC by finance to whom was referred resolution number 166 of 1516 by Alderman, Alderman Hammond awarding the sale of $3.4 million in general obligation promissory notes series 2016A and recommends that the resolution be passed. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Actually, could we take 6.1 and 6.2? Very good. 6.2 is an RC by finance to whom was referred resolution number 167 of 1516 by Alderman Hammond and awarding the sale of $7.55 million in taxable general obligation promissory note series 2016B and recommends that the resolution be passed. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would move for 6162 to accept and adopt and put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion, <coughs> Alderman Hammond. Thank you again. I would uh, like to open the floor to our bond council. Is Carol? Carol, please come up. <coughs> okay. Thank you very much. Um, I had distributed um, a document that looks like this, and it actually includes the two resolutions that you are considering tonight. And what these resolutions are doing is uh, actually authorizing borrowing money. The $3.4 million resolution is uh, borrowing money for the purpose of paying for the city's capital improvement projects and also for some uh, streetscaping for Kid 16. And the $7 million five resolution is for the purpose of providing uh, development incentives for TIV 16 and also to refinance some bonds done in 2006 for TID 6. And uh, that's about <coughs> 4.2 million. Those bonds are outstanding at about 5.97%. So with uh, all, both of these financings, we went through the same process like uh, we talked about a couple weeks ago when I appeared before you regarding the water utility where we prepare a prospectus, we go through a bond rating process. Moody's has reaffirmed the city's AA2 bond rating. And then we take bids from underwriters. So this morning we took those bids. For the 3.4 million, we received six bids. And the winning bid is from the firm of BOSC. Um, that's the uh, old underwriting desk from M&I Bank. <coughs> and they were also the winning bidders on the water utility issue. Uh, the net interest rate was 1.39%. And the second issue, uh, that was uh, 7,550,000 originally, uh, but again, we received nine bids, or I'm sorry, eight bids this morning. And the winning bidder is from the firm of Robert W. Baird. And that net interest rate is a 1.73%. Uh, it's a little bit higher because it's a taxable issue, whereas the other one is a tax-exempt issue. So uh, with that, the portion that we did for the refinancing, that 4.2 million of that is for refinancing, uh, we saved over $600,000 by refinancing that uh, 2006 debt. So um, last time I was here, the water issue saved about 250000 So we've uh, definitely taken advantage of some significant savings here for the city. So with that, um, your action tonight on each resolution locks in the interest rates. The city receives the money on uh, April 20th. And then um, the dollars that belong to the projects go into a project account, and the dollars that are used to refinance debt go into a debt service account, and then we pay those bonds off when they can be called, um, which is going to be October 1st. So the, um, the handout um, has this explanation, and on the uh, next two pages it has the repayment schedule for each of these issues. Uh, there also was a change in the issue size. For the seven million was seven million five fifty, and now with the good bids, it was able to come down to seven million five twenty-five. And um, the very last page of that handout shows you the uh, it's called a difference report or savings as to how it was uh, being taken for uh, each of the years, or so about a hundred thousand dollars a year of savings there on the, on that TID six issue. The, if you are interested in the other bidders, in each of the resolutions, okay, the way they're prepared is the resolution itself is about the first nine pages of the document, and then it's followed by what's called exhibits. And so exhibit A is, is a notice of sale. Exhibit B, you'll see the, it's called a bid tabulation, which then shows you all the other bidders that participated. Okay, any questions? Alderman Hammond. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I don't particularly have a question. I just want to make a, a comment. Um, as many of you know, as part of this process, we have to go out and get reaffirmed um, by, in this case, Moody's. And I want to point out that we have AA2, which is the second highest bond rating you can have. Mm -hmm. That's not by coincidence. Um, you know, we have you know, strong reserves. We have, you know, are in a fairly good financial position. We have some demographic issues that hurt us. But make no doubt, the reason we got the interest rates we've gotten um, or received um, the bids for or be, 
are because of our strong financial position. So I would encourage, um, as you guys continue on, to keep in mind this bond rating and protect it as much as you humanly possibly can because that's what allows us to get 1.39% interest rates um, for our taxpayers. So thank you. Thank you for those comments. Uh, any other questions? Yeah, Alderman Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I've just got a question on the, um, the first one, 6.1. Uh, in reading this, um, for the capital improvements, one of the items in there is City Hall construction. I'm wondering exactly what the dollars are allocated for that and what that consists of, seeing as how the Building Use Committee hasn't you know, finalized anything and, and nothing's been decided what we're gonna do with City Hall. So if I could just get clarification for that. David Beeble, do you want to explain that? Yeah, that's that would be for the actual architectural services for design, which is still pending. It's not any construction. It would be the next phase of actually going either remodeling plans for this building or building a new building so forth and so on. So it's, it's, I believe it was like around 200 some thousand in the capital budget for the architectural services for that next phase. Okay, so it's no actual construction. Correct. Thank you. Any other questions? Alderman Jose. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I, when I read this, I thought that these, both of these bonds were for reducing to a lower interest rate. Um, so I didn't object when Alderman Hammond asked them to be taken together. I'm asking if they can be taken separately and voted on separately. Sure. We'll divide the question. Any other questions? Carol, thank you so much for the work that you and your firm have done to represent us in this offer and uh, appreciate the good work. Okay, then we'll, we'll go ahead and vote on 6.1. Will the clerk please call the roll? Thirteen eyes and one no. Motion passes, uh, and then we'll vote on Fourteen eyes. Motion passes. I'm sorry, we'll take a short break to make some signatures. gesture too to also let the public use the uh, the weight rooms and that stuff at both north and south. A lot of people take advantage of it. A couple hundred people. Carol, we're all set. Yeah, that's fine. You're welcome. Next we'll move on to item 6.3 which is an RC by finance to whom was referred RO number 309 of 1516 by the city clerk submitting a communication from the government property disposal division regarding the Social Security Administration trust building at 606 North 9th Street and recommends that the city file a letter of interest without obligation to acquire the property for negotiated sale. Alderman Hammond. Thank you Mr. Mayor. I move to accept and adopt. 
Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? All those in favor then, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Item 6.4 is an RC uh, by law and licensing to whom is referred RO number 248 of 1516 by the city clerk submitting various licensed applications and recommends that taxi cab drivers license number 0359 be denied based upon his failure to accurately reveal all relevant convictions on his application, his record of violations related to the license activity, and his record as a repeat law offender. Alderman Lassard. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion. Yes. Is Juan on Anton Antonio Razo here? Mr. Razo did appear at our committee meeting and we asked him a number of questions regarding um, the activity that he had been involved in and it was under this committee's um, unanimous decision that it would not be appropriate to offer him a taxi license at this time, but did encourage him to come back to us in a year or so when we can see that there has been no more um, illegal activities. Thank you for that discussion. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Motion passes. 6.5 is an RC by Public Works. Doom is referred uh, RO number 312 of 1516 and RC number 335 of 1516 and resolution number 169 of 1516 by Alderman Bellinger authorizing enter into a contract with Bunnell Industries Inc. for the purchase of new leaf collection equipment and recommends that the resolution be passed. Alderman Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. I move to accept, adopt, and pass resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion, Alderman Bellinger. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, last time this <coughs> issue came up, um, I, I, I spoke about it and uh, apparently uh, created quite a stir amongst uh, the residents and constituents. Um, while my opinion has not changed, I still think that uh, uh, one of the roles or the role of the local government here does not necessarily include collecting leaves. Um, I did hear the residents loud and clear, and um, while my opinion hasn't changed, my vote has changed, and I will be supporting this. It did come out of committee with a three to one vote in favor of purchasing this equipment and continuing on with the service, so thank you. Thank you for those comments. Any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage. Twelve eyes, two noes. Motion passes. Uh, under ordinances, items 7.1 through 7.5 will be uh, referred to the public protection and well, various committees. Um, matter matters laid over. 8.1 is an RO number 307 of 1516 by the city clerk submitting a communication from the Wisconsin Department of Administration saying that the resubmitted sheet two, number two of the Miller West what Miller Field West has been reviewed and the department does not object to the final plat. Um, Alderman Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. I move to accept and file. Thank you for that motion. Is there a second? second. We have a second. Uh, the uh, item is up for discussion. Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Next, we'll move on to other matters. City Attorney. Thank you. 9.1 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending December 31, 2016 and June 30, 2017. That'll be referred to the Law and Licensing Committee. 9.2 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting a communication from Paul and Lisa Roberts, owners of Anglish Avenue Pub and Grill, to propose an expansion of operations on a seasonal basis to include a vacant lot adjacent to Anglers Avenue. 
That'll be referred to the uh, Finance Committee. No, no. no, not law and licensing, excuse me. 9.3 is a resolution by Alderperson Hammond uh, authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2016 budget. That will be referred to the Finance Committee. 9.4 is a resolution by Alderpersons Cost and Thiel directing a public hearing to be held in connection with the change of the City of Sheboygan's future land use map of the Sheboygan Comprehensive Plan to change the land use classification of property located at 1413 Erie Avenue and 1416 Ontario Avenue from neighborhood preservation to community mixed use. That item will lie over. 9.5 is a general ordinance by all the persons Koth and Thiel, uh, amending the City of Sheboygan future land use map of the Sheboygan Comprehensive Plan to change the land use classification of properties located at 1413 Erie Avenue and 1416 Ontario Avenue from neighborhood preservation to community mixed use. That are referred to the City Planning Commission. 9.6 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting an application from Smet Construction Incorporated on behalf of LAG Investments to LLC to change the use district classification of properties located at 1413 Erie Avenue and 1416 Ontario Avenue from NR Neighborhood Residential to UC Urban Commercial Classification. That will be referred to the City Planning Commission. 9.7 is a resolution directing a public hearing to be held in connection with change of the city's official zoning map for property located at 1413 Erie Avenue and 1416 Ontario Avenue. That item will lie over. 9.8 is a general ordinance by Alderpersons Koth and Thiel amending the City of Sheboygan official zoning map of the Sheboygan Zoning Ordinance to change the use district classification of property located at 1413 Erie Avenue and 1416 Ontario Avenue from NR Neighborhood Residential to UC Urban Commercial Classification. That will be referred to the City Planning Commission. 9.9 .9 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting an application from Joe Vanderpie of Paper Box and Specialty to rezone property located at 1524-1526 Salmon Avenue from UC Urban Commercial to UI Urban Industrial Classification. That will be referred to the City Planning Commission. 9.10 is a resolution directing a public hearing to be held in connection with the change of the City's official zoning map for property located at 1524-1526 Salmon Avenue. That will lie over. 9.11 is a general ordinance by Alderpersons Koth and Thiel amending the City of Sheboygan official zoning map of the Sheboygan Zoning Ordinance to change the use district classification of property located at 1524-1526 Salmon Avenue from Class UC Urban Commercial to Class UI Urban Industrial Classification. That will be referred to the City Planning Commission. 9.12 is a resolution by Alderpersons Koth and Thiel directing a public hearing to be held in connection with change of the City of Sheboygan's future land use map of the Sheboygan Comprehensive Plan to change the land use classification of property located at 1424-1526 Seaman Avenue from neighborhood preservation to employment classification. That will lie over. And 9.13 is a general ordinance by Alderpersons Koth and Thiel amending the City of Sheboygan future land use map of the Sheboygan Comprehensive Plan to change the land use classification of property located at 1524-1526 Seaman Avenue from neighborhood preservation to employment classification. That will be referred to the City Planning Commission. Alderman Donahue. Um, thank you, Mayor, and this is just a, <clears throat> a point of personal privilege if I could just take a half a second because I'm not sure that Alderman Hammond is gonna be here on April 18th. I'm not quite sure how that is going to work, but- I'll be in, here. Oh, well, let me just say it anyway. <laughs> um, and if I were doing whereases in my mind, my whereases would come to whereas Don has been really a wonderful mentor, I think, to almost everybody on the council here, willing to answer our questions, take us through complex procedures. And whereas Don came into city government, I just remember becoming more interested at that particular time. And, and things were fairly chaotic. And I think Don had been on the council four or five months and then just sort of took charge um, and all for the better of the city. And whereas Don, working with Jim, I think has just presented a wonderful face of progress and development uh, for the city of Sheboygan and has really represented us so well. Um, and I could go on and on with the whereases, but just from a personal point of view, the fact that Don has always been there for a phone call, or a little beer, or whatever, uh, to to give advice and to, yeah, believe it or not, um, and uh, to 
just help this body really understand what it's supposed to be doing and how it can really do its job in the very best way. Now, see, now I don't have to do any fancy whereas thing on, on the 18th, but I just want to extend my pr deep gratitude and deep personal thanks to Don, and I think I probably speak for everybody on the council here, just a, one swell guy, uh, awfully bright, and, and I don't think we can thank him enough. So, Ditto. yeah. Well said. Thank you for those kind words. We have a, item 10 is a contemplated closed session along with the redevelopment authority, uh, Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I uh, move to convene in closed session on the exemption provided in Section 19851E of the Wisconsin Statutes for the purpose of deliberating the possible sale of public property where the competitive and bargaining reasons require a closed session related to the potential development agreement related to the South Pier District. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All those, let's see, we have to take a, a vote on this. Uh, City Clerk, please call the roll. Thanks, Joe. Oh my gosh, this is so bad. <coughs> Fourteen eyes. Motion passes. Next, I'd like to call on Roberta Paneski uh, to call to order the um, our redevelopment authority so that a similar motion can be made. Thank you. Motion. I'll do can, you, can you make the same motion? Yep. On behalf of the RDA, I move to convene in closed session of the exemption provided in Section 19851E of the Wisconsin Statutes for the purpose of deliberating the possible sale of public property where competitive and bargaining reasons require a closed session related to the potential development agreement related to the South Pier District. Second. Not you. No, not no. you. Okay. Dave, second. Roberta? Just a half. You want? <clears throat> Call the, you need to call the roll for the RDA. Roll. Okay, we're all set then to go into closed session. We'll take a five minute recess. And for our viewers at home, we, we will be adjourning in closed session. So this will be the end of the telecast for this meeting. Thank you. Yep.